the 34th Infantry here, right here in Minnesota, the Red Bulls, right up here, are playing a huge role in Iraq right now. They've got a huge contingent in Afghanistan right now. When these guys get back, seek them out and talk to them. Find out their stories. Find out what we're really doing on the ground. That's really the message tonight, is let's hear the truth from the guys who've been there. My story of freedom, the moment when it really rung true for me and the light bulb came on, my awakening moment, if you will, the moment when I truly understood what freedom really meant. And like, like everyone, I thought I knew before I left. I thought, yeah, it's freedom. We can go to the mall. We can do what we want. And it's not that easy. And like Freddie found out, freedom is, is a wonderful thing. And I was in Kabul one day with my team. And we're the bearded guys. We've got all our big tricked out weapons and looking all tough. And my team was inside the building, and I was out on the street pulling security. And a young girl started to walk up with me with an older gentleman. And I'd been watching the news, and I'd seen the, the media reports of using small children as suicide bombers. And I kind of, my heart began to race, and I was perspiring, and it was pretty intense. And that was the first time in my military career I didn't know what to do. I had had so much training on how to react and how to do the right thing. And at this moment, I saw that little girl, maybe six years old, walking towards me. And I didn't know how to react. And I kind of froze, and I just let her come up to me. And her dad, her grandpa, whoever he was, kind of nudged her. And at that moment, she reached out her hand to me. And I reached down, and I took it. And she looked up at me and said, in perfect English, Thank you for freeing my country. And that was it for me. That, that moment right there was it for me. That's when I understood freedom. Because I looked in that little girl's eyes and I could see what she was now going to have. She would have opportunities to get an education, to own a business, to go to school, to go to the hair salon, to do things that in Afghanistan the women were not allowed to do. And that was it for me. And that story is not unique to me. If you talk to the soldiers that you see from the Red Bulls when they get back, they'll tell you similar stories, I guarantee it, because you see it all the time. You know, I read the article in the Brainerd Dispatch about this event, and I read that there's no politicians who are going to be allowed in the door. And I think that's a wonderful thing, for the record. And then I broke my cardinal rule, and I read the comments about the article. And I saw the, the back and forth between both sides, and the, the bantering, and, and I'm right, you're wrong, and I'm right, and you're wrong, going back and forth. And what I know, and what I've seen in, the, in Afghanistan, is you need statesmen. You don't need politician, you need statesmen people you can trust, people you can look in the eye and know that they're being honest with you. And my father taught me that lesson. And he's sitting outside at the, my book table, um, looks kind of like the picture of me with the beard. <laughs> he likes to point that out more than I do. But I know I can trust him. And I, he knows that he can trust me because we can look each other in the eye and we know that we're telling the truth. And we know that our word is good. And that's what we need in America. We need statesmen who are true to their word. And that's what Afghanistan needs. That's what Iraq needs. That's what most of the countries in the world need is statesmen that are true to their word. So I want to leave you with these final thoughts and what I believe is the answer to this dilemma, how to find these statesmen. So the first thing I want you to do is when you meet a veteran and you're in a room surrounded by him right now, say thank you. 
thank them for their service, thank them for what they've done because they've earned it. They've earned that thank you. And the second thing I want you to do is look them in the eyes. And you'll see a couple things. You'll see some sadness and some pain because of what they've been through and what they've experienced. But I want you to know that that experience is what sets them apart. It's what gives them that unique perspective about freedom and about knowing what freedom and liberty truly means. You'll also see in those eyes, you'll see leadership and you'll see courage and integrity, and you'll see the ability to take on any challenge that you find in life. And the last thing you'll see is honesty. You'll know that you can trust them, because they know that you can't BS in the Army, because that means it'll cost somebody's life, and we don't do that. We're trained to be honest and maintain our integrity at all times. And then I want you to thank him, his family. Because our families sacrifice just as much as our, our service members do when they sit here and they worry. My wife worried every night, knowing that I was running around the mountains with Navy SEALs. She worried that I would not come home, that she would get that phone call. So thank their families. And finally, and this is where I think the answer comes in. Ask that veteran to continue serving. Ask him to stay engaged in the fight here at home. Ask him to become that statesman. Ask him to step up, just as we've done, awaken, find people to follow you, find people who believe in you, and become those statesmen. Take the duty and the honor and the courage and our leadership and our integrity and our ability to make the right decisions and continue serving. We have battle-tested leadership coming back every day from our combat zones, and we need to tap into that. I believe that's the answer. I believe that our future, that America's future, lies in the courage and integrity of our veterans. Thank you.